Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, yesterday I promised you a reveal video of the brand new bike that I've bought to replace my beloved Panigale. I'll not keep you hanging around a moment longer than necessary, I'll reveal the bike after the intro. All right, so with the magic of YouTube, I actually uh, filmed yesterday's video back in April, and I've been waiting for this bike ever since then. I'm recording this video on uh, Saturday, July the 15th, so what, I've been waiting a good three months for this. Actually, it's come a lot earlier than I thought. I was told it was likely to come in September, so I'm absolutely chuffed that I managed to get it in the middle of July. Uh, anyway, uh, so first thing is, do I miss the Panigale having not had it for three months? Uh, honest answer, absolutely not. I mean, I do miss the looks of it. I miss coming into the garage here and seeing that beautiful bike sitting here, but I've got plenty of photographs of it. I can look back at that, and I really haven't missed not riding it one iota. So uh, I think it was definitely the right decision to uh, sell the Panigale. That has allowed me to, uh, together with saving up a bit more money, to buy this bike so without further ado let me uh, whip the cover off show you what I've got just before I do whip the covers uh, off the bike that I've actually bought, I must say a huge thank you to all of you that put comments in yesterday's video getting what I might have bought to replace the bike. A uh, number of you got the uh, bike right. A lot of people said things like uh, Ducati Street Fighter. Uh, some of you said uh, Ducati Monster. Some of you said Street Triple R. It's none of them, but this one, it may or may not be a surprise to you. Let me whip the covers off. Da -da. What do you think? Big surprise or not? Probably not a massive surprise to you. So here we are, brand new 2023 Kawasaki uh, Z900 RS SE. This is the SE model, which gives you the uh, blingy Olin suspension and the gold coloured forks and the gold wheels and this yellow ball uh, colour scheme, which I absolutely love. Now, uh, to be honest, I didn't buy this because I particularly wanted the Olin suspension. You know, it's obviously a bonus to have. What I did want to do is buy the bike because I love the colour scheme of it and I love the gold forks and I love the gold wheels. So a ridiculous excuse, but uh, yeah, that's why I went for this. So I've absolutely loved these bikes since I first saw them back in 2017 at the NEC Motorcycle Live uh, exhibition. I think then it was, it was launched as a 2018 model. Let me show you how I got here. Now, one of the showstoppers, as far as I was concerned, at this year's uh, NEC Motorcycle Live in Birmingham was on the Kawasaki stand. This, the Kawasaki Z900 RS, an absolutely beautiful looking retro machine. Listen to that, she sounds absolutely beautiful. I love what they've done with it. I don't know if they've uh, paid attention to tuning the engine so it sounds good, but it certainly does, even with that single standard can. It sounds the biz, this. Lovely bike. It feels lightweight, it feels agile, it rides like the best modern bike that you've ridden, uh, yet it's got this retro charm about it. It's got the lovely, creamy, smooth four-cylinder engine. From a practical point of view, everything just works. The mirrors are uh, brilliant, absolutely rock solid views out of them. The seat's comfortable, the riding position's nice, the brakes work absolutely fine. So you've got bags of power, the suspension feels good, and on top of all that, it looks good, and I just can't think of a better way of spending 10 grand, to be honest. And if I had to spare 10 grand, I think I'd be uh, handing over my cash to the boys at Blade right now. Really nice bike. And then more recently, I did that biker scram with uh, Jeff and Dan, where we rode up to Gilks, Jilks Cafe, uh, and I borrowed one of these from, uh, I think it's from Wheels Motorcycles, and uh, and I basically, I refell in love with the bike, and I kind of made my mind up then that I really should uh, decide which bike I wanted to move out of the garage, because I needed the room and the money, so that I could save up and buy one of these puppies. So talking about things I like, how have I found this bike then? What's my conclusions having ridden it for well, about 100 miles today, I suppose, on this longer ride? I have to say, I really like it. It's, uh, it's a bike I would definitely consider as a next purchase. Do I like it more than the Speed Twin? Hard to say. It's certainly on a par with. It's different, I'd say. It feels more urgent because of its four-cylinder nature versus the Lazy Twin. But it certainly feels lightweight. And it certainly handles well and it looks great too. So yeah, big thumbs up for the Z900 RS. So why then did I settle on this, my first ever Kawasaki purchase? Uh, well, I think what it is, after I passed my um, license back about 11 years ago now, and I think over that time I've had a number of bikes, I've ridden obviously hundreds of different types of bikes, and it's allowed me to kind of understand what sort of riding I like to do. And the sort of riding I like to do really is twofold. It's going out uh, riding, touring, so that's kind of adventure bikes and uh, touring bikes, uh, and then it's just bimbling around the lanes, pootling about, enjoying the scenery. And for me, that's where retro bikes come in. I clearly love retro 
retro bikes. I already own the Speed Twin and of course my custom Royal Enfield Interceptor, which on the face of it look like similar bikes. They're retro bikes, of course, but they have very, very different riding uh, characteristics. Uh, and then I just thought that the, this bike, as I loved it so much when I've done those previous rides, I thought I was more likely to ride this than I would the Panigale, and that is absolutely proven true. Uh, I only got this two days ago on Thursday. Uh, it's been basically raining ever since then. Today it's raining again. I was supposed to be going to the Fairfield Air Show today, but I've been my ticket and haven't gone, so making this video instead. Uh, my other bikes, in case you're wondering where they are, they are outside standing in the rain while I'm filming this. I always get asked that question, where are your other bikes gone? They haven't gone, they're still here. But yeah, anyway, so today's all about the Kawasaki. Absolutely loving the look of this bike. Cannot wait to get some uh, miles on it. What I'm gonna be bringing you over the next few uh, weeks and months are definitely some ca comparisons between this and the Speed Twin. They're the two retro bikes that I think are probably top of the market and the ones that possibly people consider. And being an owner of both, I should be able to give you a really good kind of uh, response to which one's best. They are, my initial thoughts are that they are just different. But uh, anyway, we'll see how that goes over the next uh, few weeks and months. Uh, and then we'll shake out maybe after a couple of years, I might decide that it's only worth having one of the bikes and we'll see which one I sell. I don't know, but it will take me probably a couple of years uh, before I come to that sort of conclusion. You may have gathered that uh, I'm the sort of person that takes ages to decide that I want a particular bike. I then save up, buy it outright, and then I keep it for as long as possible. I'm not somebody that churns their bikes very, very quickly. So I know what you're thinking. Did I play the YouTube card? Did I get some money off the bike? How much did I pay for it? Is it favours, backhanders, all that sort of thing? Well, absolutely not. I paid full price for this, 13,700 quid with the extras that we'll go into in a minute. Um, so yeah, I didn't, couldn't even get myself 50 quid off. The salesman at the dealer I bought this from wasn't a YouTube fan. He had no idea who I was until later on when somebody told him. Uh, so during the actual sale process, that didn't come into play. Let me just show you the few uh, little extras that I've done to the bike uh, in terms of uh, you know stuff over and above standard spec. So I really haven't done too much to this bike, or I don't intend to do too much to it. I want to keep it as standard as I possibly can. First extra that I ordered though at time of purchase, Digler Fit and all that, were the standard Kawasaki heated grips. I think in this country, heated grips are an absolute must. So, so those are on there. We'll see how, how well they do. They seem to work okay. It's a bit weird the way this button works compared to say at the Triumph, where on the Triumph you press the button, it shows you on the dash which level setting you've got it on. On the Kawasaki, you have to press it a number of times to go through one of three settings. But uh, so really glad they got that done. That's the first thing. Uh, the stalky mirrors I'm not so keen on. They do work quite well, so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna change them or not, but for now, they stay. Uh, the other change I've made was down here. I've uh, put on one of my Optimate uh, charging uh, lead things so that because because I've got a number of bikes I'm jammy like that, uh, I can't ride them lots and lots. I'll make sure that when they're in the garage, they're plugged into Optimates to keep the battery topped up. So that's another little change I've made. Next thing was I got myself a tail tidy fitted. The uh, Kawasaki comes with a monstrous plastic affair at the back. So uh, got rid of that and uh, got the dealer to fit a tail tidy. Uh, and I think that's it. The only other thing I'm thinking about potentially changing in the fullness of time are the tyres, because some of the reviews I've seen on this bike uh, say that the Dunlop tyres that come with standard aren't too hot. I've not had a chance to use them much yet. I certainly haven't used them in the wet yet. Um, and by the way, when I talk about it raining, it doesn't mean to say I'm not gonna ride it in the wet. I just want to do this reveal video with the bike still clean. It's the forecast is that it's gonna rain pretty much all the next week. So this bike is gonna get pretty dirty as I bang some miles on trying to, trying to uh, run her in. Anyway, if you've got one of these, let me know where you think I should change the tyres and what I should change them to. Actually, the only other thing I might do with a splendid new bike is add some sort of uh, carrying, some storage facility on it. Now, I've done a bit of research and I have to say there's not much aftermarket, well, there's nothing that Kawasaki make that you can put on in terms of like saddlebags that are in keeping with the bike. And I can't find much aftermarket that's kind of in keeping with the bike either. There's a lot of throw over, soft luggage, that sort of thing, but it's all quite modern looking. Uh, the one that I do like the look of is the Hepco and Becker stuff, uh, which are like leather satchels that go on the side of some actually relatively ugly frames, but they, the actual uh, kind of leather satchels look quite good. The only problem with them is they are really, really expensive. So I'm looking for ideas as well about what I can do for luggage carrying. It just adds utility to a bike, particularly for me when I'm always carrying cameras and things, if I can just chuck stuff in some panniers on the back. So if you've got any ideas there, or you know of some good ones that suit this sort of retro style bike, let me know. I'll be really interested to see what sort of storage I can get on the bike. So there we go, that's my new bike. Uh, what do you think? I'm absolutely chuffed to bits of it. Do you think I made it the right choice, a good choice? I cannot wait to get some miles on it, as I say. Next video will probably be something to do with running in. Again, if you've got any hints and tips on running in, put comments below, love to hear them, and uh, we'll have a bit of a discussion about that when I start to put some miles on. I think I've got to put 600 miles on her to the first service, so uh, given the rate that I ride, I not a huge amount on my own bikes, it's probably gonna take a little while, but uh, I'm gonna try and do it, because I really enjoy riding this bike. It's an amazing uh, bit of kit to ride. Uh, as you can see, if you watch those previous videos, Videos I did. Anyway, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.